You're listening to The Governor's Podcast, which is hosted by school governors, for school governors, and for all involved in or impacted by education governance. On The Governor's Podcast, we have open, honest, and transparent discussions about governance in the UK education sector, sharing and providing insights into the realities of entering the boardroom, sitting around the governing board table, and leaning in. Hello, I'm Sharon Warmington and I support schools and academies as a governor, governance practitioner and a clerk. I'm also the CEO of the National Black Governors Network, supporting the education sector in diversifying their governing boards. And it's Olivia D. Hind here, an under 30, unapologetically black female who is changing the face and space of school governance. And you're listening to The Governor's Podcast. Okay, let's get into today's topic. So what would you say is your personality type around the table? My own personality? Yeah, so like how how do you feel like you come across um, in governing body meetings? It's very strange because I wear different hats according to what role I'm playing. So um, as a a clerk, I would say that I'm quite... um, I'm on the ball, um, I'm attentive in a different way because I'm listening out for maybe compliance things, governance things, rather than getting under the skin of the reports and things like that. Mm -hmm. As a a governor, I think I am probably surprising to some people who know me. I'm more reserved and... Quiet? Quiet, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, because I'm very, I'm a reflector. Yes. So, right. um, so I have to digest. I need time to digest. And I know we've talked about this before, but I need time to digest information. Mm-hmm. So that's why I like my papers in, ad- in advance so that I can take the time, sort of soak things in and then ask a question. If I ask mm-hmm. a question at all, yeah. because I'm not the kind of um, governor that will just ask a question for asking sake. Yeah. And that, not that there's anything wrong with that, because mm-hmm. as a clerk, I know that if it's not spoken, it can't be minuted. Mm-hmm. So I, I am aware that some governors will ask questions so that the question is asked and answered rather mm-hmm. than their own um, need for the answer. If right. That makes sense. OK. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. So, yeah, I like to be I like to be quite reserved, um, present, engaged but reserved if that makes how, sense how do you show engagement with a reserved or quiet or introvert personality would you say I always make sure my camera's on oh so you're talking about virtual meetings right? yeah okay. because, well because that's where that's where we are really um most of the time if you're if you're in person then it's easier to see engagement I think but think? when yeah because when you're around the tech you can see if somebody's not interested <laughs> Like if they're distracted by their phone, yeah. they're looking around, they're sitting back in their chair. Yeah. They're not, le- they're not literally leaning, leaning in. in. Yeah. Right, so, you, okay. so you can see it, but virtually it's, it is a bit more difficult to show engagement. Mm-hmm. And I think one of the fundamental ones is cameras um, on. on. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I prefer Zoom to Teams. Right. Because Zoom, you can have everybody on screen true whereas yeah. teams you have it's a limited, limited yeah you have mm-hmm. a limited number mm-hmm. so so that's how I and speaking about myself that's how I show engagement my camera mm-hmm. is always on um unless I'm going getting up to turn the heating down or to open a window or something and, and I'll you don't switch. want to distract everyone by just absolutely. walking away <laughs> yes absolutely so um so I'll just turn my camera off if I'm going to do something blow my yeah. nose or anything yeah you know it still amazes me that people do everything still on camera it's like don't you you see yourself because at the very least you will see yourself 
yeah it's very distracting when you're when you're on virtual but yeah I, I I keep my camera on um mute myself until I want to um um respond to something or ask a question um I use um virtual meeting etiquette in terms mm -hmm. of raising my hand the the icon on mm -hmm. there and I try because I've done the prep in advance yeah I try and at that point during my preparation part I try and um write my questions down then yeah so I'm not then caught off guard kind mm -hmm. of um you know and and feeling under pressure then to find mm -hmm. a question where am I going to find a question from and you know and scanning through the the document or listening right. intently to to try and formulate a question because I personally just my brain just doesn't work like that so yeah. um so that's how I stay engaged but I do admire people who I know people who can rock up to a meeting, you know, they're speed readers and, and, you know, they can ask. They've the probably most... read the papers in the last couple of hours or something yeah. like that. And they can, um, they can, you know, ask the most solid questions and you're thinking, wow, why didn't I ask that? <laughs> so then would you say that's a personality type then? So I, I remember attending one of your um, training sessions um it was a diversity training session I believe and you were talking about I think it was a diversity training session and you were speaking to teachers specifically and you were um talking about personality types and I believe there were four different types and reflector was one of them and I believe there was an activist pragmatist and I can't remember what the fourth theorist. one maybe a theorist right yeah. so do you feel like um, in the spaces that you're in, whether that is as a clerk or as a governance professional, that you see these different um, personality types around the table? Or do you see that um, in those spaces, you tend to see more than one or the other? Um, or that you, um, like, is there a good mix? Or do you find that there's a cluster of people who are just expected to speak because they are very confident, they are very knowledgeable or whatever it is. So it's not just about you as a personality type, but how other people come across to you in those spaces. Um, the session that you're referring to was um, a session, as you said, for teachers and the whole mm -hmm. focus of that particular um, slot was so that they could understand who they were in terms yeah. of their learning styles so that when they're then in the classroom mm -hmm. if they know that they are a pragmatist for for argument's sake mm -hmm. they will and they're aware of what the other learning styles are mm -hmm. they would be able to pick them up not only in the children mm -hmm. or the students that they're working with but also their colleagues mm -hmm. because sometimes we you know, for many years, I, I didn't understand why people didn't think the same way I did. You know, yeah. why, why I'm a details person and everything has to be just right. Mm -hmm. And I didn't understand why people would do things. And it's like, oh, yeah, that's good enough. Mm -hmm. do you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. so I wanted to learn more about me so that mm -hmm. I could then accept people who were different to me. Yeah, I hear that. I hear and that. So in a diversity context, if you're going to bring diversity, and this isn't just about race, no, or, or you know, um, or many, age, or many or of background. the other, yeah, mm -hmm. many of the other protected characteristics, it's just about diversity in its broadest sense. Yeah, um, somebody who thinks differently to you, somebody who learns differently to you, somebody who who operates differently to you. Mm -hmm. um, you have to first, in my opinion know who you are mm -hmm. and then you can you can see other people who are like you so around my governing body table I know other reflectors I can see the traits kind of thing yes yeah. I can see those that are more activists mm -hmm. I can see the theorists and the pragmatists so I can see the different styles but what I tend to do more of when I'm around a governing body table rather than looking at people's learning style I look yeah. at their characteristics and this is okay. something that I learned from Carl George mm -hmm. who's the the governor of governors <laughs> mm -hmm. um and um I learned this on on his um effective board member program um understanding the characteristics around the board table which is you know you have your um your dogs and the characteristic of a dog is that they're very loyal 
Mm-hmm. Um, you have your snails. Mm-hmm. And the characteristic of a snail is that they're very slow. And I and I associate snails to people who are either always late to meetings. Yes, uh, with no with, excuse or consideration for people's right, time. So. Or they're slow in submitting or providing their apologies or anything mm-hmm. like that. So I, I classify those as, as those are my snails. You have the peacocks who mm-hmm. just want to, you know, they want the world to see how Pretty, amazing they are amazing what they are. everything they know yes. want their voice heard all the time absolutely and those are usually people who are yes I'm a governor in such and such a school it's or, a status thing absolutely it's all about ego um or you get not the, knocking any peacocks no, no. You, need, you need a bit of that absolutely energy and, I'm get, and I'm getting to that it's and the then extremes. and then and then you have the sharks who you know you, you know, a, a school, a senior leader can present something and they're, and they're on it. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're on it. Every little thing they're, they're, they're picking up Constant on. It. challenge. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. so, you know, there's, a, I think there's about 10 different characteristics that um, yeah. in this, in this model um, that are all animal related, but it's the characteristics yeah. of those animals. And mm-hmm. what I say to any governing board or anybody going into leadership or anything like that, is know the characteristics. You yes. don't want a board full of dogs. No, no. Because there's no challenge. You yeah. know, they will they will do whatever you, they, you tell them. Very to agreeable. Sit. Absolutely. If you tell them to sit over there, they'll sit over there and they'll stay there. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's mm-hmm. and that's played out in terms of can you sign this? Can you approve this? You know, yeah. I need a decision on this. You and know, then and okay, it, yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah, sure. Is, what do you need? What do you need? Right. Yeah, yeah. Everything is rubber stamped. Um, you know, or if you have a board full of peacocks, everyone's just there for ego and, and yes. you know, you can't really get, any, you, you're battling against people's egos and it's like, I just want to run a school. Yeah, you know, exactly. Kind of, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Or you have, um, you know, sheep, um, very much like dogs. They're just followers. So, mm-hmm. you know, we'll go over here and then we'll go over there. So then there's no, there's not necessarily any new ideas right. or fresh perspective. It's right. more a case of waiting for someone to say something and yet saying, and you yeah, agree. let's just yeah. go with that. Yeah, yeah, it, right. I guess it's like, you know, um, when there's um, things that come to the governing body to tender. And so like, you know, you have to make decisions about which supplier you're going to go for and you don't do any, if you're a sheep, you won't do any level of analysis to see if the one that the right. school has picked is actually the most right, the best right decision. One. Yeah. Um, or it could be things like policies, a change is made in a policy and you just go along with it, but you're not thinking about the actual practicalities of that yes. policy being implemented and who it impacts and who wrote it and who manages it. Because someone who challenges it will be like, okay, is this something that is a trust level policy or a school level policy? You're trying to understand the level of efficiency in putting this policy together and the the, the updating of it. But a sheet would just be like, yeah, sure. Yeah, okay. Exactly. That's so you, cool. you're you're very right. passive. You're very passive mm-hmm. in your in, in your role. So going back to um at the beginning, yes, I always say once you can understand self 100 percent then you can understand the other characteristics, the other personalities yeah, definitely. In, around you. And you um like one of the things that my coach has always said, said to me is if you're the smartest person in the room, you're in the wrong room mm-hmm. because you're not learning anything. Mm-hmm. So even around a governing body table, even if you are the chair, you have to position yourself in, um, in a way that you learn something. You respect other people's decisions because there, there are other voices around the table. Right. So I think we talked about this briefly um, in the, the episode where we talked about the chair and how, and I think we've talked um, about it in previous episodes where it's like, knowing the personality of the chair as well um, so that the chair is not there just because they want to say that they have this um, senior position or they're Mm -hmm. superior but it's more a case of helping with the coordination of a meeting but everyone's voice is still equal um, to a large extent and so people can, you can disagree with the chair, you know, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> like if the chair may say something that you don't particularly agree with. And that aids the discussion because then what you do for the senior leadership team is you give them something to go away with and think about rather than be like, okay, we've written this paper. This is the decision that's been made. 
but we still don't know if it's the right decision because our board hasn't properly discussed it or um, really given us um, food for thought. So, you know, that's to be considered as well. Um, yeah, yeah I, ab- I absolutely agree. Um, you know, the chair is there to lead the board, yes. but it doesn't mean that what they say goes. Word because, up. Uh, because- <laughs> Was that a millennial slang? <laughs> because you, you, you operate as one. Yes. You have to move united. It doesn't mean that you won't have disagreements. It doesn't mean, I've had people say to me, do I have to agree to everything? No, you don't. No. You can, you can um, vote no on something mm-hmm. and you, or you can abstain from voting on something. There's nothing, there's, there's no issue with that. And I most, mean, you don't disagree just for the sake of disagreeing no, ab- absolutely, either. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know. And that's, and that's, you know, the important thing. And, and for those who are, who are new, the more you travel along your governing body journey, as it mm-hmm. were, or your governance mm-hmm. journey, mm-hmm. The more experience, just like anything, it's like a new job. You're not yes. going to know and feel comfortable with everything on day one definitely not you know no. you, you you've got to get under the skin of it and feel it and and understand that the way the the board and the school ebb and flow and that and fine. the thing is even if you've governed in a school before every school is different you yeah, have yeah. to understand that they could literally like the two schools that you've governed in governing in or whatever they could both be secondary both without six forms they could be both um i don't know um single sex or you know mixed schools it could have uh, like on a criteria basis on a list on paper they may sound exactly the same or 90 percent similar But when you've got the different personalities within the senior leadership team, the head teacher, and then the people around the table, the way in which that they um, they uh, teach and run the curriculum, the way in which they make decisions, the way in which they integrate extracurricular activities, all of that starts to give the 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 detail that in that gives it that individualistic way of um, looking at a school it gives it the context it could be the demographic balance it could be all of that and it's thinking about those personalities sitting around the table knowing that there's so many more personalities that make up this school community and it's how you weigh up on all those and so when you were talking about the animals earlier the word that just kept coming back to me is balance Mm -hmm. balance and balance doesn't necessarily mean equal it doesn't mean doesn't mean you have one of every type of animal it doesn't mean that it just means that the balance is right for the school that you're in absolutely without being a group think or rubber stamping kind of kind of um situation and that's why Mm -hmm. and and the thing is you know even if you're in a mat no matter how small or large the mat is don't mm-hmm. expect that all the schools are going to operate the same. Exactly. Because what team. makes them different is the individuals, yes. the students, the energy. Going back to that, that um, training that I was delivering and I talked about how teachers themselves can control the culture yes. in their classroom, yes. which is different to the culture of the of department, the mm-hmm. which is different to the culture of the whole school. Yes. You, can, you can understand and, and, and determine the culture, what happens in this space. And it's the same thing with a governing body or a trust board. What is the culture of that board? How and you do know, we do things here? Yeah, and just as you're saying that, the moment one thing changes, that culture shifts, because yes. you notice it when you have a new head teacher. Yes. The moment there's a new head teacher, the, it shifts. Like whether it's a good shift, a bad shift, or it feels neutral there is a change because it's a different person coming in yeah there has to be yeah yeah. and so it is it could be the organizational structure you could have a head teacher that comes in and says I want two deputy heads rather than one so that in itself changes or it could be that they want less assistant head teachers or it could be that they want to lead the school on this they want to focus on this element of the school's ethos whereas the previous one wanted to focus on that it could be an interim head teacher so they're thinking I may not be here Mm -hmm. for a long period of time so they're only operating within the the length of their contract Mm -hmm. so therefore 
it's not going, they're not going to have the same long-term vision of the school. Yes, they may have good intentions so that if they do leave the school, they leave the school in a strong position, but there's still a part of them that is thinking, I'm only here, I'm potentially only here for a temporary period. Mm -hmm. So it could be that they, it's a stepping stone. It's a bridge to the school that they really want to be in. So Mm -hmm. it's knowing that there's, the moment there's one new change whether someone leaves or someone comes in and that at a governance level at a strategic level it could be when you get new governors I remember there's um there's a school that I've been a part of still a part of where they um we had four or five new governors come in at the same time Mm -hmm. and you feel it you feel the shift all of a sudden I feel like some old governor I think mature is the word you want to use there. You no, know, I'm old. I'm seasoned, man. I'm seasoned. <laughs> right. So I was like, I feel like a mature governor, you know, because I'm no longer, it's, it's just a reminder that I'm no longer a new governor in this mm-hmm. setting. I'm someone who's been here for two, three, four years. And yeah. there's someone who's been in here for two, three, five minutes or yes. meetings. Yeah. And so, so that changes it as well. And it's like, you're thinking, even me thinking about, okay, what are these governors interested in? Like, who mm-hmm. are they? What's their background? What are their personalities? Are they someone who wants to know everything before they get started? Or will you even see them? Yes. Because yeah, exactly. yeah. will you even see, because some people will become governors, but they may be the ones that don't put their camera on in a virtual meeting. So you can have a new governor for six months and you've never seen them. Never face. seen them. <laughs> so, yeah. so it's just knowing that each change shifts the culture. Even each meeting can feel different because the moment someone sends their apology, like you could get used to seeing someone at your meetings. Or some, then, especially somebody who contributes. Exactly. And their, their personality is the is the shark or there is the go. peacock or there you go. You know, is the is the is the monkey who's excited about everything kind of thing exactly a busy body and then they're not there in a meeting and all of a sudden the meeting feels different it flows differently because that personality isn't there so personalities isn't just about the individuals who are listed on the governing body but even on a meeting by meeting exchange by exchange basis I find that yeah sorry mm -hmm. I find that when I'm clerking a minute in meetings right okay. the, the energy depending on who's chairing depending on the composition of a committee your minutes feel the, different the minutes feel different wow. the energy like you know I think it's one of the reasons why Clark's gen I'm generalizing now dislike finance committees <laughs> because <laughs> finance is so boring no our finance but, meetings are cool the finance I know, meetings I've heard yeah, I like them but that's because the energy in the room because I know the individuals who yeah, are yeah, on yeah. your finance committee so the energy in the room makes that more interesting and we're all we all just happen to be chairs of other committees so those yeah. on the finance committee are chairs of the other committees which yeah. I think is a really interesting dynamic yeah and and I I find as I say as a clerk some meetings I'm I'm not excited I think is the wrong word because I don't think you can get excited <laughs> to take minutes but um it you doesn't can. feel like that's it, your quirk yeah it, okay yeah I get excited to take minutes um I do get excited about some meetings okay and others I'm thinking oh I don't know how this is going to hit today this is going to be hard yeah <laughs> because mm-hmm. I just know that the energy in the room um you know the the just yeah the characteristics around the table I feel you something's just off Uh, mm -hmm. and and you know I do try and um weave my magic where I can and sort of um suggest people who may join certain committees or suggest people who may want to to kind of switch it up a little bit because it is important if there's no energy in the meeting you need it then there's no energy in my opinion going into the school Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yes. It's really, it's really hard. You're not, you're not excited about the decisions that you're making. And you know, and- it's not, e- it's not even just the content of the meeting. It's not even just flowing through the agenda. It's the, the personalities start at the door. Yes. When you, when you walk in, is there any kind of engagement? Do you remember what someone told you last time you, you had an exchange with them? It just kind of, can you, can you run a little joke 
a little, yeah, you know, yeah. A, a professional joke, but still a joke nonetheless. You know, one of the one of the best. Or people really stiff. Yeah, <laughs> one of the best experiences I've ever had. I think I've ever had in all my years in governance and clerking was a school that I joined as clerk. My yeah. first meeting. I loved it. I loved it first because it was a four o'clock start and I was okay. used to meeting starting at 530. So it yeah. was a four o'clock start. So I knew I'd be done by six. Yeah. And I sat down, unpacked my laptop and everything, met the chair for the first time and the head and all of that. And um, and the chair looked at me and he says, right, Clark, what time are we finishing this meeting then? And I looked at him and I looked at the agenda and I went, hmm. I think we could do this in an hour and 15 minutes, chair. And he went, right, the clerk has spoken. An hour <laughs> and 15 minutes it is. And he did it. <laughs> Absolutely. Wow. And, and that actually, um, I didn't know then that um, he was that efficient in his, yeah. in his mm-hmm. meetings that um, mm-hmm. they never um, ran over, over, ever. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, sometimes they would be longer, sometimes they would be shorter, but they never, ever ran over. And mm-hmm. that sort of set the tone for our relationship going forward. It yes. really did. And um, and the just... space, and the space, yes. then the governors who come into that space, that is a culture, that is a culture that was formulated by, yes, the, the chair, but mm-hmm. also those who are participants of that culture or, or, or within that space. So that's why I say that even, even if the schools are exactly the same, the governing bodies will not be like there's always yeah. going to be a difference of culture it's like it's like looking at two families two families that um come from the same nationality they yeah. are not the same though because no. it's always the personalities that shift the mm-hmm. way in which a group operates absolutely and absolutely. so it's, look, it's looking at that and it's recognizing what kind of so sometimes maybe this is a question that can be had or that can be asked or a discussion that can be had sorry um if there's any kind of away days for governing bodies what culture do we want to set as a governing body for mm-hmm. this academic year mm-hmm. that could be something you discuss well one of yeah one of the things that i um created um in the last um 18 months actually around all of the diversity training that i've been doing mm-hmm. especially for schools i've br- I've broken down the word race in um, as an acronym yeah. and the R is for reality. So governing mm-hmm. bodies can say to themselves, so what is our current reality in mm-hmm. respect of whatever mm-hmm. it could be? What is our current reality in terms of um, understanding the Ofsted framework? How mm-hmm. many of us know what it, what the, what the new framework um, is? Yeah. If Ofsted were to come in, what would be the reality of how many governors who would feel comfortable um, at meeting Being with Ofsted, questions. that kind yeah. of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The A, um, at first I was using that as aggressions or microaggressions. I've now switched that to actions. What okay. actions do we need to take in order to change our reality for the yes. better? Okay. The C is for culture because no matter where, where we are, what we're doing, there's, there's always, always a culture. A culture. Mm-hmm. What is the culture around Ofsted coming in? Mm-hmm. Are the staff fearful of it? And if yes. so, how can we change that so that they we we lessen the fear and um, increase the confidence? Of it's ourselves. almost first knowing what what the fear is triggered by. Is it lack of knowledge, having never engaged with Ofsted before, right. or is it because you've experienced Ofsted? It's almost like trying Absolutely. to figure out where that trauma is yeah. coming from. Right, kind of right. So so that's in the in the culture, and you can change the culture around that. And then the E is for how are we going to educate ourselves to embed and embrace the change that we're wanting to make? Yeah. Yeah. So, so whichever you, you know, as I say, I use it around um, for, for diversity, but you can adopt it in almost any situation I've found and I'm owning the copyright to that. (laughs) The the RACE, but yeah. And it's, it's a, it's a fundamental thing. And, and that's the thing with acronyms, even though they may be created in one space over here, that doesn't mean yeah. that you can't take the lessons and apply them somewhere Absolutely. else over there. And if you don't want it to be um, race, it can be ACER, A-C-E-R, but then it just means you're bringing the reality afterwards, what all these things you do to then formulate the reality towards the end. That's then the goal rather than the starting point. 
just depends yeah, on that, that doesn't work yeah, for me that doesn't I, think, work. <laughs> I think that's the name of a computer brand as well it is <laughs> as a copyright and intellectual property and but all that I get that I get the point you get, get point. me you get one so, so the, I suppose the bottom line as we um move into the takeaways takeaways yeah my my takeaway would be um as I've always said you know bring your difference to make a difference Mm-hmm. And don't be afraid to do that. And just because you are different, um, you know, whether you understand your own characteristics um, differing from other people's, that doesn't mean that the governing body you're on or the trust board that you're on isn't right for you. Yes. They may need that yes. um, difference and you bring yes. your difference to make a difference. You don't just want to be same, same old, same old, same business mm-hmm. as usual and all that kind of stuff. You want to, because the world is changing, the world is it moving is. forward. So we as governors need to also change and move forward as well. That's true. That's true. I think my takeaway would be going back to something you said, but it's something that I actually um, teach and um, how do I say it? A lesson that I find very important to plant within the students that I work with, whether this is on a one-on-one or a group basis in schools, is to start with self. It's it, The more work you do on yourself, understanding your personality, your learning style, um, the way in which you communicate, the way in which you engage in a space, what your individual culture is, what yes. are your um, patterns of behavior, what are things that you like about yourself or things that you feel like you need to improve? The more you understand that is the more you can um, bring it into a space more and be more considerate and compassionate of the other people if they're doing mm-hmm. the same work, because then you'll be more receptive to having uh, someone disagree with the, you without being offended by it. And you're saying, mm-hmm. okay, we have a difference of opinion. How can we come together to make this work to support the school in our role as governors? So like for me, I know that I'm a slightly different governor um, now than I was three years ago because I recognize three, four years ago, I was still very new to the whole concept of governance, let alone in certain schools. But then with me continuing to do the internal work, it means when a new person comes in, one, I don't feel threatened. Like, oh, this person's going to come in and take a spot that I really like or a place that I've crafted. But it's almost like, hold on, Olivia. It's a reminder that I'm so much further down the journey. I know stuff that I can teach someone. So, you know, it's recognizing how... um, how important it is to understand yourself so that you can better understand others and recognize that some of your personality traits will be triggered, dare I say, or will come out more in certain situations. Yeah. And you yourself will change. You yourself yes. will change the more you become knowledgeable. So it's not that you come in with your personality and think this is how I'm going to be. It's recognizing that as you're on a journey, things shift And it's knowing what that culture is. And does that culture work for you? Is it a growing culture? Is it something that you can see yourself in? Even though it's different, you know, the whole getting comfortable, we've been uncomfortable. So are you recognizing it as a culture that doesn't work for you? Or one that you need to grow with, the one that you need to kind of give it more time. So that's what I would say as my takeaway. Start with you and then you can kind of take on the other selves that are around that table. Um, But I will kind of do a little add to this episode. So even though we've done our takeaways, we've had our full discussion and done our takeaways. I would like, because it's the last episode going out this year, so this calendar year, 2021. We're, and we've only been doing this a year. So we've, we've... Yeah, started in February, February yeah. 2021, so, our first so episode released it, in the last week of February. It's our first Christmas. It is, it <laughs> is. And I thought it would be nice um, for this end of um, a calendar year to share something that a few, a number of people have messaged us via Instagram, um, people engage with us on Twitter. We've had emails. I remember yeah. someone sent us, I can't remember their name specifically and I don't have it in front of me, but they sent an email basically saying, I have friends who podcast and they always want to know if their listeners are really enjoying the content. 
um, what it is about the episodes or the podcast show yeah. in, in general. They like, so they're like, this, I don't actually have a question or anything. I just want I'm to just tell sharing. you, I'm one of your listeners. So, you know, those things are very warming to hear and receive yeah, it is um, nice. because it reminds us that we are talking to people um, and that people are actually finding them very useful but this one person in particular messaged us on Instagram I won't mention their name just to keep them um a bit anonymous but they're based in northwest London and they said I'm really loving your podcast we are running a parent governor campaign at the moment so this was uh, sent to us in September and I've sent links to your podcast to all the parent whatsapp groups and then anyone who has approached me for more information I've also just become a chair of a committee. Your discussions have given me more confidence in what I'm questioning. They have been so valuable on top of the e-learning, et cetera. So thank you. And we would like to say thank you to you for listening to our podcast and actually letting us know that it's having a direct impact on your governor journey. Um, specifically mentioning that your parent governor you're telling all these parent governors in their WhatsApp no, groups real. about the podcast. Really good. So I, I just thought I had to, I actually messaged her. I responded to her at the time that she messaged me and, um, or messaged us, I should say. And I said, is it okay if we mention, read this out? Because that is not just your podcast great, is great. Your podcast is useful. It's like, it is actually impacting yeah, the way impact. that I govern. It's making sense. And it's making me feel more comfortable in my um, governance role. So I, was, I just yeah, want to say thank you. That, that is a really, really um, nice thing to, to, to receive, actually, because mm -hmm. you do wonder <laughs> what impact you're having. And we like talking yeah. to each other. We like talking full stop. So, yeah. you know, it's not a hardship for us, really. Mm -hmm. um, but it is good to know. And I, and I remember when I did a session for the Black Governors Network a couple of weeks ago, which would have been November um, 2021, just in case you're listening to this next year, um, yeah. that, that one of the attendees who is a new governor said that these podcasts have helped them to um, learn, they've learned more on these podcasts, listening to these podcasts than they have done through the induction or any other training that That's they've so done good. yeah because I mean I'm not saying it's good as a sense that no, the induction doesn't hasn't satisfied them, but the fact that this is a, a resource that they can go to exactly so it's not it's not that we're um dismissing the need no. for induction training and all that but it's showing that um it goes back to your learning style some yes. people um you know are they learn more through audio on conversation they're, they're, they're auditory learners and so mm -hmm. you know they can digest things I love mm -hmm. reading books but I don't have the time to read books so I listen to audio books yes. um you know and that's just so it's a different way mm -hmm. and so if you do know any governors or potential governors definitely then this is definitely a good podcast to share with them if we do say so ourselves <laughs> no absolutely you know and I'm, and I'm saying that not to beat my own drum no no but, yeah. to, but to say that you know, because most training for governors comes after you become a governor, That's you can't so you true. can't access it until after you become a governor. Very true. It makes absolute sense to, as part of your um, recruitment drive, mm -hmm. send send the link out mm -hmm. so that they can go down all the episode items and just pick items that that appeal to them. No, and then get a flavor for you know. Absolutely. Because we, we, we literally give you situational examples, you yes. know, where we share from our own experience. That's the only way we're able to have these conversations because we're actually in it and we're talking from experience, you know, the personalities that we reference. These are people that we know. We've just anonymized them, you know, all mm -hmm. the, the conversations that you have down to that first episode where you're like being the only one in the room, the meeting is finished and you're ready to pick up your bag and go, I've done that. Like, I yeah. don't want to mingle at the end. Although now I mingle a lot yeah, now more. Now you you're, you're more mature and you've been and there a long time. Exactly. So, the, so those new governors are looking at going, why are they why, why are they still there? Like, <laughs> why are they still there? And I'm just like, it's, you know, you're talking about life things or, you yeah. know, you because you're you become a part of the fabric as it were mm. um so yeah so I 
just want to say a wide thank you to all of our listeners throughout this year, whether you started with us episode one, four, 17, or this is the first one that you're listening to. We really appreciate it. We will definitely be bringing you more agenda items next year because obviously we're still in the middle of an academic year. The autumn term is coming to a close, but we appreciate the time that you invest in sitting and listening or standing and listening or running and listening like some people do um, listen to their podcast when they're on a morning or afternoon or evening run. Um, But we definitely also appreciate the feedback. And so we also welcome suggestions. And if you would like to hear your feedback read out on the podcast, then just email us or you can um, find us on social media. Thank you. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of the year. Thanks for listening to today's episode. Please rate, review, and subscribe via your preferred streaming platform. The Governor's Podcast is a brand of the legal entity Education Governance Solutions Limited and a free training resource for anyone. So if you know someone who is interested in becoming a governor or a trustee, please share this podcast with them. And if you'd like to get in touch with us directly with questions or comments, then drop us an email at thegovernorspodcast at gmail.com. You can also follow us on social media platforms at The Governor's Podcast. Let's connect.